as with different forms of taxation, uh, there are a number of ways that uh, that the governments can uh, inject money into the economy, a number of different ways that, uh, that the governments can spend. And again, it's very important when you're answering um, a... Uh, A-level economics answers, really, whenever you're talking about this sort of concept, to be quite specific about the types of expenditure that you are talking about. Because as we're going to see in this video, uh, the, the type of expenditure that the government undertakes or that you propose that they should undertake uh, can have quite different impacts in terms of uh, the macro economy. So in terms of how we refer to these different types of expenditure, there are basically three forms. We've got current expenditure. We've got capital expenditure and we've got transfer payments. Um, and again, as we've said, the impact of these is quite different. So it's important to understand uh, what sorts of things each of them involve. Now, current expenditure, that is the day to day functions of government. These are ongoing expenditures. So these are, for instance, the civil service. These would be uh, teacher salary, teacher salaries, at least in the UK where, uh, where we have a, a state education system um, and, uh, and other things like that. So day to day uh, expenditures, um, that's called current expenditure. Capital expenditure is investment by government. In other words, we are talking about fixed capital creation or formation, it's sometimes talked about. So uh, this would be uh, construction projects. So uh, if uh, the government paid to build a hospital, to build a school, that would be considered here. Um, this also includes uh, anything that government does to develop the infrastructure. So, for instance, constructing roads or railways, anything like that. So that's considered capital expenditure. Um, and transfer payments is um, a way of referring to payments for the purposes of social protection. So it's not written very clearly, is it? Um, social protection. So uh, we're talking here about benefits um, and, and things like that. So the transfer payments are uh, payments which are kind of uh, collected from one group of people in the form of tax and then redistributed to, uh, to others. Now, um, it's important to think about in each case what the impact of uh, well, firstly, what type of expenditure um, it is that, uh, that the government is doing, current capital or transfer payments, um, because the impact that they have is, uh, is quite different. Now, the first thing that we can think about is um, what are the impacts of these things on aggregate demand? Now, we saw in an earlier video that aggregate demand is consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus net trade. So which of these uh, types of expenditure then influence those different components? Now, what we can see is that the current expenditure is perhaps the, uh, the most straightforward and direct. The current expenditure one, that will be felt uh, in G. That, that is the, the, the definition of the G component is current government expenditure. So anything that we've got going on there, that uh, shows up in the G part of the um, aggregate demand uh, formula there. Now, the capital expenditure, because it is the fixed capital creation, it isn't in G. It is in I. I is investment, the creation of fixed capital, regardless of who has actually done it. So even if it's the government that does the investment rather than a firm, it shows up in I rather than in G. So current expenditure shows up in G, capital expenditure shows up in I, transfer payments don't directly show up anywhere. And this is quite a common mistake that, uh, that, that candidates sometimes make. They will say something like, uh, if the government increases benefits, that shows up in G. Um, it, it doesn't. There, there is no direct impact of transfer payments on any of the aggregate demand components. What we probably could say, though, is uh, that the transfer payments, because you are generally transferring this, uh, this income or this wealth from uh, those people with high income and wealth to those people with low, the, the people with low incomes tend to have a higher 
uh, propensity to consume um, b because they, uh, they, they spend more of their income. So one of the things that, that we could say is that we might see an indirect, so I'll do it as a dotted line, we might see an indirect impact of these transfer payments on uh, the C component, the consumption. So now that we've thought about those, then let's think about how these various different things have a, uh, a wider impact on the economy in terms of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So we've got our three different types of expenditure, current capital and transfer payments. Let's start with current expenditure. So if I am wanting to show the impact of uh, current expenditure, I'm going to do an increase in, in each of these so that we are consistent. So... Um, If I want to show an increase in the level of uh, current expenditure, we've said that that will show up in the G component um, of aggregate demand. There will also be a multiplier effect um, because this is uh, is an injection. So there's likely to be a multiplier effect here as, as those civil servants and teachers and so on uh, go out and spend their incomes in the economy. Um, but the, uh, the overall in impact here that we're going to see of an increase in current uh, expenditure is going to be a shift to the right of AD with, as we've said, some form of multiplier effect going on as well. So if we draw it like this, what we would expect to see is, um, as I've drawn it here, a slight increase in uh, demand, pull, inflationary pressure, and an increase in, uh, in real GDP, and uh, probably a reduction in, in unemployment as well. So the current expenditure one is probably the simplest to, uh, to analyze. Uh, you've got an increase in G, that shifts AD to the right. You've got a multiplier effect as well, although the size is quite um, disputed within the field of economics, but we'll leave that for the uh, evaluative video, which will follow this. Um, that moves AD to the right. And uh, and that gives us the uh, the impact which which we can see here. Now, when we're thinking about the capital expenditure, remember we said that that is going to affect the I component. There is also then going to be a multiplier effect there as well. OK, what we also hope, though, is that this should particularly if it's a infrastructure project, increase the productive capacity of the economy. So what we end up with here is potentially a kind of double effect, one which kind of happens relatively quickly, a relatively short term effect, and then another which is a, a longer term effect. So what we can think about is that we still have our increase in AD as we did before, because this is still an increase in one of the uh, the aggregate demand components, and there is still the multiplier effect. This is the one that probably happens faster. This is the, the shorter term of the two effects. What we would also hope, though, is that because it's also increasing the long run productive capacity of the economy, that actually what we will also get here is potentially a shift to the right in long run aggregate supply as well. Now, obviously, that's going to take slightly longer to uh, to to take effect because the the projects are going to have to be completed and people are going to have to start using them, and that's going to have to filter through into the economy. But hopefully, that's what uh, we should end up with. And because you've got a double shift here, the outcome always depends on how you have relatively drawn the two shifts. Now, as I've drawn it here. There is no real change in the uh, inflationary level within the economy, or at least there isn't in the long run. There might be demand side inflationary pressure uh, in the short run when we temporarily hit this equilibrium point here. But um, but in the long run, uh, certainly as I've drawn it here, that uh, that inflationary impact will go away and we will get an, an increase in the real GDP within the economy. Now, the transfer payments one, as I said, um, is a little bit more disputed, I suppose, uh, than the other two. Uh, it is certainly a more indirect effect. Um, but the argument goes essentially that, uh, that low income earners have a higher marginal propensity to consume. So if you take some of the income away from high earners, transfer it to low earners, the likelihood is that more of that will be spent in the economy uh, rather than 
saved or, or something like that. And as a result of that, what we would expect to see, as we've seen with the others, is an increase in aggregate demand like this with the corresponding increase in the general price level and real GDP as a result. Now, I'm going to deal with the uh, evaluations of each of these um, in a separate video to stop this one getting too long. But um, suffice to say that, that there is quite a large degree of dispute um, about all of these, in fact, in, in terms of the impact that they have on the economy. Um, but uh, in terms of analysing them, the really important thing to remember is to uh, think about the type of expenditure that the government is undertaking and make sure that you think about the correct components which are being influenced.